dancings, my soul. a man but many times we use human language human terms human metaphors human nouns to describe you so with time we brought you down to our level forgive us Heavenly Father, God Almighty, uh, the heavens cannot contain you neither can the earth yet you feel all things immortal invisible omnipotent the only true and living God mm. when I look upon your goodness and your faithfulness each day I'm convinced it's not because I am worthy to receive the kind of love that you give but I'm grateful for your mercy and I'm grateful for your grace and because of why you poured out yourself I have come to sing this song out in prayer When you heal, you heal completely. <laughs> your name we give you glory and honor 
Amen. You may be seated. You know, when you see somebody who is introduced to preach, and instead of preaching, he's singing, he's a very shy man. So he doesn't know what to do with all this crowd. But tonight in the introduction, I think Pastor Brian didn't see that Mama Rosemond is in the house. So she's right there in the corner. For, for some good reason, she wants to sit there so that if anybody is coming to attack me, she can attack the person from there. So that, that, that's where she, she is. Okay. And then today we have a... We, we just want to thank God for the opportunity to be here. And it's good. Um, um, our brother and our friend, Jim Ike, is in the house. I hope, even my singing, he doesn't think I'm acting. Yesterday I asked him, so at what point do you really believe people are not acting? Tia! Tia! <laughs> All right, so the man is right here. Yesterday I, yesterday I told him, I said, you spoiled the whole meeting. You spoiled the whole meeting. And um, all those P terms for whatever foolishness and um, a little folly and Jimmy and, 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 and uh, Buluani Kekwashiani. <laughs> you know. The one who says the bull, that is um, Reverend Dr. Christy Dotete. But it's good to see Jamaica in the house, everybody. And then um, we, we are so glad we are all here. Um, a short while ago, I saw um, my daughter, Joyce Val Mokhtari, in the house, but I think she, she, she left. She's going somewhere. I guess she will come back. But the Lord bless everybody, and um, Reverend Sam George is here, so let's behave before he says order. But um, we are glad. And Prophet Brian is just amazing. You know, everybody, you want to be associated with something that is good. And I, I thank you. You are my friend. I thank you for being my friend. And then he and his brothers, they are very good friends. Recently, we had a challenge. There was something we had to deal with in Texas, Houston, Texas, where his brother is. And I called his brother immediately. I said, hey, Doc, there's something you have to deal with for me in um, Texas, and the guy was available, did it more than I even expected. We are so thankful. We are so thankful. We are so thankful. Now today, I, I'm finding it difficult to, um, to come to the table because of what I'm carrying. You know, if you, you are passing through the airport and what you carry is an explosive, you, you are quite careful when the security and everybody they are huh? so I'm carrying something which is explosive. You see, the whole of Christianity is supposed to be explosive. When I see a taste, and I see people who say they don't believe in the Bible, and they say Christianity is not real. I don't argue with them because what they are saying, if you listen to it carefully, they have a point. Sometimes they tell us that if the Bible is so true, why don't they see what is in the Bible in today's church and among today's Christians? And one of the things that is conspicuously missing from us is the explosive nature of Christianity. Christianity is radical. You hear of radical Islam, radical religion, radical that. Christianity is supposed to be radical. Yet our Christianity is so predictable, so premeditated. And so the predictability and all that about Christianity and the way we have programmed everything makes Christianity very boring because sometimes you can look in the Bible and you're like, is it the same Bible that was given to us? Is, is it the same Christians that, that are recorded in the Bible? The Holy Ghost they had, is he the same Holy Ghost we have? 
Why is everything so, so, so predictable in the church? So today, I want to start with something on the explosive nature of Christianity. And I will finish off at the all night. And in all that, I'm just trying to touch the, just, just the tip of the whole thing because we can be here forever and never finish the subject. Christianity, especially what we call Pentecostalism and Charismatism, has its root from the day of Pentecost. And when you look at what happened on the day of Pentecost, um, we have things like Azusa Street Revival. But even Azusa Street Revival, I'm a student of revival. I've read a lot on revivals around the world. Even Azusa Street Revival does not come anywhere near what happened on the day of Pentecost. I normally would tell my son, Archie, I say, Archie, a revival is coming. I say, Archie, some fire is coming. I say, I can see something coming. A cloud is coming down, and it's a cloud of the glory of God. And the thing is coming down and down and down, and it's getting closer to the earth. And I tell Archie, when I prophesy that the cloud is coming, it is not for your generation. I tell him, my eyes will see it. I believe I will see that revival. Even at my age, I would see that revival. So for those of you that are younger, get ready for that revival. Something is coming and it's so explosive. What we see today, which we call church, what we call church today, will so radically change that a lot of you will have problems with it. You will have problems with the movement it will be too huge for you to handle. It's coming. And it's not far. Now let us go back to that day they call the day of Pentecost. Acts chapter 2 and the verse number 1. The Bible will say, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, the disciples were all together in one place with one accord. And the Bible said, as they waited, suddenly there came from heaven a sound as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the room, and cloven tongues as of fire rested or sat on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. Three words can be found. This scripture carries three words. Number one is the supernaturality of what happened on that day. Number two is the spontaneity of what happened on that day. And number three is the spectacularity of what happened on that day. This night, I want to be dealing with the supernaturality. If I have chance or if I have time, I will go into the spontaneity. And then tomorrow night, I will deal with the spectacularity of what happened on the day of Pentecost. Now we are young and we have a lot of energy. We have a lot of power in us. So it will be easy for us to appreciate the supernaturality of the day and the spontaneity of the day and the spectacularity of the day. Religion or Christianity that misses these three elements is bound to be boring because Christianity is supposed to be that, that supernatural thing. The Bible said on that day of Pentecost, there was a sound from heaven. And that is where I get the supernaturality from. That this sound came from heaven. It came from heaven. And suddenly, spontaneity and clothing tongues as of fire, spectacularity. Sometimes I, I hit a pulpit and I don't know, should I speak? Should I just let God do his thing? And if you are a preacher today and you just say, God, do your thing and you don't preach for three messages, they say, the man of God is backsliding. He's not preaching the word. But somebody who can say the word and somebody who can do the word, which one do you prefer? 
it is about time we see people do the word. It is about time uh, that we begin to reenact what was written. Can I hear some shout like thunder in the room? There was a sound from heaven. A sound from heaven. The sound of supernatural. And when they say something is supernatural, the word supernatural comes from the Latin word supernaturalis, which means beyond the nature. But look at us in our churches. Everything is so natural. Natural water, natural air. Natural. The only thing artificial is artificial hair. As of hair, you can believe it's artificial. Artificial fingernails. Nothing supernatural. Nothing from beyond the earth. Nothing from beyond natural. And when you are a preacher and you try to precipitate the thing that is beyond the natural, you are easily accused of being a courtist. You will be branded a courtist right now if you try to walk in the supernatural realm. So now, the supernatural realm has become so rare and the natural realm has been so accommodated in the church that it has become normal. And when people talk about a powerful church or a great church, they are talking about a church which is nice, a church which is organized, a church which is decent. You go to our service and they are so nice, Jack. Praise and worship, 10 minutes. Prayer, 7 minutes. Offering time, two and a half minutes. Testimony, six minutes. We have locked up the worship in such a way that when the Holy Ghost comes into our services, he has no space to move. I'm praying that. You know, the other day I heard some preachers talking about my generation handing over to the next generation. And they are saying, we are wondering whether the generation can take over from us. My problem with the whole scenario is this. Are we handing over to them something they should continue? What are we handing over to them? Listen, we may be handing over to them dead babies. A dead church is what we may be giving to them. But I'm praying that somebody in the next generation will be a John the Baptist. That there will be a mind shift and you will leave the synagogue in Jerusalem and find yourself at the river Jordan like a John the Baptist and everybody will come to you that from the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom of heaven is suffering violence and the violent take it by force everything is supposed to be supernatural when you are supernatural you don't use your nat you don't lose your natural but you are super to the natural you are super and let me show you in the bible quickly 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 even the new birth is supposed to be supernatural supernatural except a man be born of water and of the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of god Nicodemus said, can a man enter into his mother's womb and come again? He said, no, Nicodemus, except a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. You must be born of water and you must be born of the spirit. And he said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, it is super natural. He said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So, when you get born again, I'm not expecting you to talk about your temperament again because you have become a new creature. So, you should have no temperament that is following you into the new path. You meet all these people, I'm a sanguine, I'm a phlegmatic, I'm a choleric, but you are the one who just said you are born again. And watch this. I'm not expecting you to talk about ancestral curse. Because you are born again. 
and when you pray you say our father which art in heaven that means your father's weakness is no more your weakness your father's sin is no more your sin you are a brand new person born again now watch this that word or that term born again means to be born from heaven to be born from heaven it means the day you are born again everything about your biological father has left you because you are born not of the will of man not of the flesh not of blood but you are born of the spirit so there is no longer a bloodline but there is a spirit line and the spirit line came from above and he who the son has set free is free indeed stand fast therefore in the liberty wherein Christ has made you free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage I came to tell you tonight there is nothing about your biological father in you there is no weakness of your biological father in you you are God's strength you are God's power you are God's wisdom of Christ Jesus he has made us wisdom and righteousness I declare to you now you are free We don't understand. I tell this story all the time. I believed in the Bible so much. One day, last week, when you were in Boga, somebody asked me a question. This, this time. Daddy, do you think you are an ordinary person? I said, no, I'm not. He said, really? I said, yeah. I said, sometimes... It looks like I'm dreaming. I don't feel normal. I, I feel I'm in another world. I told the person, I don't know how to describe it. For example, I believe inside me that I don't live in Bogatanga. <laughs> You can see me in Boga physically, and I still don't think I live there. Why? In him I live and move and have my being. So you see, the standard of my life is not Bogatanga standard. So when you come to Bogatanga, you realize that I have my own environment within the system. I have my own culture within the system. I have my own life within the system. Why? I am seated together in Christ Jesus in heavenly places, far apart principalities and powers. You can't be, you can't be walking about quoting all these, we are citizens of heaven. And you still say, I'm a Ghanaian. I'm an, I'm an African. I'm an American. I'm a British. Since when you are a new creature, all things, including your citizenship, have passed away. You have come to Mount Zion. You have come to the General Assembly. Now watch this. Watch, watch this. You have come to the spirit of just men, made perfect. So you know what? Your fellowship is with spirits. Spirits. Angels. You have come to the innumerable company of angels now when you start talking like this you look you look funny you look funny what, what kind of what kind of person and there are times you are just sitting down you don't know whether you are floating whether you are suspended you don't know whether the laws of gravity are working you just don't know any of these huh when you open your eyes you yourself can feel it Sometimes I open my eyes. People think it's intentional. It's not. I, I feel charge inside me. I, I feel something inside of me. I came to declare to somebody, by the time we finish this meeting today, supernaturally, you will change. And you know, sometimes I do. And uh, Apostle, uh, Prophet Brian will imitate me. And do, you know, it's not me. Sometimes it is. Sometimes. of 61.
61. I'll be 62 in two months. I don't feel it. I don't see it. You know what, people? You are a new creature. And if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal body. Come on, shout like your voice is yours and press. The, the new birth. But look at us. Born again. Then you know, apostle. They have to go through Sunday school. And they have to go through converse classes. And I look in the Bible and they are not there. Yeah. Why? Because when those people change, they have changed. They drop the alcohol in one day. They drop the womanizing in one day. Fear! You don't! have to use one month to stop fornicating. The day you get born again, drop. You don't need one month to stop taking alcohol. The day you get born again and you say, I am born again, drop it. That which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. New birth, baptism. Look at us, even baptism, baptismal classes. I'm not saying those things are not good. They are good for crawlers. But when you were not born again to crawl, but you were born again to run. Listen to me. There is somebody here in the name of Jesus. You are born again not to crawl, but you are born again to run. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and not be weary. When they walk, they shall not faint. The loudest shout is bringing the strongest blast. The supernaturality of baptism. What a baptism. We are in Christ and we are baptized into his death. So that like as Christ was buried and rose from the dead, we also must walk in newness of life. And you look at the, our baptism. I see baptisms in the Bible. And the baptisms were not formal Nice ceremonies where you wear white clothing. Mm. Can I say this? The parties are too many in the church. Celebrations are too many in the church. I'm, uh, Prophet Brian, I'm getting ready to do a meeting in, 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 the month of, um, in the month of June. We have a three weeks fasting and prayer. I think it's three weeks. And one whole week, I'm going to call it music free fasting and prayer. Where the Bible said King Darius put Daniel in the lion's den and music was not played in his presence until the following day. I want to separate one week of that fasting and prayer. No organ, no guitar, no drums. We will sing but just with our voices. I want to see what happens when you take entertainment out of the church. Ah. What will happen? Listen to me. Many of us, without the music, our churches will die. And sometimes, I look at this corner in the church and I feel embarrassed. I try to look for it in the Bible. I'm not seeing it. Somebody will say, okay, I see all the instruments in the Bible. Yeah, but was there a band? A band sometimes made of unbelievers. about an organist. And I asked the people who were playing with the organist, I said, is he born again? They said, they don't know. <laughs> but that is the person who is playing from Sunday. That is a person who is playing 
from Sunday to Sunday, they are not even sure that he's born again. The people run all these, our videos. A lot of these young men in the technical teams, they are not born again. Somebody can smoke him and go and edit church tape. And that is why when they edit, there are a lot of mistakes because his brain needs editing. Baptism. The, the ceremonies. So I want to do a meeting. Like, can I do Monday to Friday? No, no instrument. Let me take the entertainment out of the church and see what happens. Can we do church without reggae? Mm. Do church without high life? Mm. Baptism. I was on ceremonies. We are too used to them. Even ordination services, instead of fasting and prayer, we hold parties. Hey. After the meeting, we must eat. I've never seen a generation where pastors eat like today. Hey. <laughs> we use every excuse to eat. Where is the baptism? Supernatural baptism. Where a man is being baptized. His name is Jesus. And he's coming to be baptized. And the preacher is looking at him and saying, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. So you understand that the supernatural is featuring in the Bible, in the baptism. And in those days, they're not called baptism a baptismal ceremony. It was not a ceremony. It was a supernatural encounter. When they went to be baptized, it was a matter of life and death because you could be baptized and you'll be killed the following day. I have a friend called Prophet Yawano. Prophet Yawano told me a story. Prophet Yawano said he was in a plane and in that plane a man came to sit by him and the man was of Arab extraction. The man sat by Prophet Yawano. Arab. And the Holy Ghost told Prophet Yawano, start speaking in tongues. Start speaking in other tongues. Prophet Yawano said, I'm going to make a fool of myself. How do I start speaking in tongues? I don't even know this man from anywhere. And the Lord says, speak in tongues. Prophet Yawano started speaking in tongues and didn't know he was speaking Arabic. Because naturally, he doesn't understand Arabic. By the time he finished, the man started crying. And the man asked him in English, how will I give my life to Christ? He said, why? He said, you just spoke Arabic. He said, I don't understand Arabic. He said, you just spoke in the Arabic language and you told me everything that has been happening in my life. My confusion in my family. You just told me everything in Arabic and I want to give my life to Christ. Now, watch this. Watch, watch the serious part of it. Watch the serious part of it. Prophet, I will not let the man to Christ and when you finish, the man said, goodbye, my friend. I may see you again. And Prophet Yawano said, why are you saying that? He said, in your country, you have freedom of religion. And when you get baptized, or you get born again, it's a fashion. It's a way of life. But in my place, when you give your life to Christ, and you get baptized, they may kill you for it. So by the next time, I may be dead. So I don't have the luxuries and the freedom you have. Listen to me. Our ceremonies and celebrations are too much. And you, the younger generation, I pray that we will not give you this entertainment, which we call Christianity. We have some entertainment. Every, we, we, 
at the least opportunity. We want entertainment. And Jesus is baptized. When he was coming out of the water, the Bible said the heaven was opened and a dove from heaven. The Holy Ghost in the form of a dove rested on him. And John said, upon whom God told me that upon whom you see the spirit descending and remaining, the same is he. And John declared it. And the Bible said that God spoke from heaven. He said, thou art my beloved son, and in thee I am well pleased. At the baptism, heaven was open. I pray that in our baptismal ceremony, instead of parties and celebrations, may the heavens open. I said, may the heavens open in the name of Jesus. May the heavens open at our baptismal ceremonies. The Ethiopian eunuch, the man is coming from Jerusalem. He encounters a man of God by the name of Philip. Philip took him into the water in the desert and baptized him. When they came out of the water, Philip disappeared. Listen. Let's stop blaming unbelievers for being atheists. And these are unbelievers. These are unbelievers. These are, they are not. They want a proof. They want a proof that this version of Christianity you are giving them is not a corrupted, watered down and diluted version of Christianity. They want to see the New Testament again. They want to see the heavens open again. They want to see people. This, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. If tonight after this preaching, prophet, if tonight after this preaching, I disappear and appear in Boga. Ah. And tomorrow, people see me in the office. And they are like, Daddy, how did you come? I say, I just preach. And by, by the time I realize, I've appeared in Bulgaria. Next week, the church will be full. Yes. Now, tell me, nobody will be an unbeliever. The reason they remain unbelievers and their hearts are hardened is partly they don't see the Bible we preach in our lives. They want to see the supernatural. Supernatural birth. Supernatural baptism. Supernatural power. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give at thee. They know the man was born crippled. Everybody knew him in Axim. Everybody knew him in Cape Coast. Everybody knew him in Bogatanga that he was a cripple. Sitting not in the church, but in the marketplace because most of our miracles today take place in the church, but not in the market. The unbelievers are saying, if it's real, then bring it to the market. Because you see, Jesus healed them in the synagogue and healed them in town. <laughs> the crippled man everybody knew at the gate of the temple beautiful so he said look at me 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 we are telling the people don't look at us look up to God <laughs> Peter said look at me what Jesus had I have the same silver and gold have I none but such as I have give up thee in the name of Jesus rise up and walk he pulled this crippled man by the hand and the man was walking. Tell me, you don't need follow-up. Ah. The church will be full. Look at the millions we spend on advert. There's no pastor who doesn't do advert. I do it. To my own embarrassment. One miracle can advertise. What one million dollars cannot advertise on TV. One miracle, just just one one genuine, authentic. So supernatural birth, new birth, supernatural baptism, supernatural power. What about supernatural prayer? Even our prayer should be supernatural. The disciples in the days of Jesus, one day they prayed and there was an earthquake. Earthquake. The place shook. So we are born again. You are baptized. 
you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So on the day of the Pentecost, the Bible said, suddenly, there was a sound as of a rushing mountain wind. They were filled with the Holy Ghost and they began to speak with tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. Now, look at the way Paul was called. There is no way you can be called like this and you will doubt it. When you are traveling to Damascus and you see light above the brightness of the light of the sun, he fell to the earth. That was his calling. He fell to the earth. Today, some of you will go home. When you open your door, an angel will be sitting in the church, in a chair. I'm, I'm, <laughs> people, I'm, I'm believing God that your call is going to be supernatural and your ministry is going to be supernatural. Everything about you is going to be supernatural. I pray, may you encounter the supernatural in the name of Jesus. And you know what? The supernaturality will lead us into something I call spontaneity. Let me take spontaneity just a little bit and then I'll be closing tonight. Spontaneity. That something that is spontaneous is instant. Instant! The thing has happened. Instant. Bishop, we need something spontaneous. That whilst we are sitting here, instantly, things that are spontaneous are instant. Instant. That means in an infinitesimally small amount of time, something happens. So the Bible will say, and while Peter was yet preaching, the Holy Ghost fell on them. Look at, look at, look at. I don't know about you, but for me, it's embarrassing to be a pastor. Every Sunday, I meet embarrassment. Almost every Sunday. Almost every, maybe let's say, if there are four Sundays in a month, three out of the four, I feel embarrassed. To be honest with you, any time I stand in that church and I hold a normal service and close and go home, I feel so bad. I ask myself, so will Jesus hold a service like this? This organized religion. Prayer, opening prayer, praise and worship. Predictable, offering, preaching. Altar call, then we go. I said, God, 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 I want to see something. I want to come to church and be like Jesus. Lord, I didn't see him conclude services with let's share the grace. Why is mine always ending with the grace? Why is every service of mine ending with the grace? Why? Why is it that every service I preach for 45 minutes, one hour? Lord, I want a service where when I start speaking in two minutes, a blind eye is open. A crippled person is walking. Lord, I want the situation where I'm preaching and seven young men sitting up there start running down. We want to be born again. I want to see a service where MPs are climbing trees like Zacchaeus and they are climbing a tree because they want to encounter God. Lord, I want to see your power. I want to see something spontaneous. I want to see a service. Well, whilst we are yet preaching, hmm, a song can just take over and the glory of God will fill the place. I want to see a service where I stand at the altar and I can preach because the glory of God has filled the service. Lord, I want something spontaneous. I want something spontaneous. I don't want all this premeditated and all this pre-organized and pre-fabricated, you know, pre-fab. Everything is fabricated. Lord, we accuse our churches. And you know, the, the thing about pastors is we are very good at accusation. This church is too quiet. If something needs noise, they will shout. <laughs> they are quiet because they are not seeing it. They are not reacting because they are not seeing it. If something breaks out spontaneously, there will be a reaction. 
Makatanuski Mitraina Messiah. Lord, I want it. I want something that will happen instantly. I need the instant, the instant. Oh, and I could talk about the instant for a long time. I've seen preachers who are fighting against instant things. They say God doesn't do things instantly. God works slowly. And I say, you're a liar. If you cannot precipitate the instant, just keep quiet and keep your slowness to yourself. But when I read the Bible, in the beginning was God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, without form, and, and the spirit of God. The earth was without form and it was void. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. It was instant. It